Hello Tarnished, welcome back. Today we are taking on the nefarious, disgusting, putrid, rancid, shit-talking, shit-devouring father of all defilement. It is the one and only Loathsome Dung Eater. Kill you and defile your corpse. Here he is, the loathsome dung eater, sitting on his elven throne. He is grotesque, he is rancid, he is an awful, awful character in the lands between, and it is going to be a great joy to paint him on his <laughs> deserved throne. So you can see here his little positioning, he looks really nice, wonderful little figure with his sort of <laughs> almost arrogant pose on a chair and this wonderful throne. Of course, this is another STL designed by the one and only Realstone on Patreon, who also did the STLs to the Radan Festival that I did before. Also the Let Me Solo Her STL design and tons of other Elden Ring stuff. So if you're looking to print your own Elden Ring stuff, be sure to go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description. But first things first, we need to get this guy primed. So I'm gonna do exactly that and prime him now with some black. Done. That was easy, nice and quick. And I think the best thing to do will be for us to Zenith or Highlight, have him sat on the chair so that we can get our nice light source going over the top of both of these parts. So nice and simple, got my airbrush, got some white ink here. So as I've done many, many times before, I'm gonna have the light source sort of coming, I think like that angle. I think better if it's coming down like sort of that, you know? So there we are. There's our Zenithal highlight job. Looks quite cool. As always, I love doing it. I really like how it looks when you get a good highlight done. Next up, let's just paint him. First things first, I think we should work on the boy himself. <laughs> he's, got his, he's got his cute little outline of his hands where he's sat. That's quite funny. Let's just give him an overall dry brush, some metallic paint over his armor, to which we can then, you know, add extra bits of flair and interest to. I'm gonna go with a base coat of Iron Warriors. Just a nice general dry application of this metallic paint, just all over him. Doesn't matter if we get it onto the sort of parts that aren't armor, because we're gonna go over them later. Right, yeah, there we are. We have a general coating of Iron Warriors all over the armor. What I want to do is just grab a shader, Agrax Earthshade. I sort of want to dirty up his armor a bit, so this will sort of add a bit of brown to proceedings. Just give a bit of a wash of this Agrax Earthshade all over his armor. And it'll nicely darken things out, add a bit of shade, a bit of contrast. Also a nice sort of like dirty kind of hue. That's with a wash of Agrax Earthshade over him. Whilst he is drying, we have some little bits of exposed skin on his hands. Um, do you want to come very quickly squish your baby's cheeks or are you very in the middle of something? Where are the baby's cheeks? In the car, on the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Right. Baby's face squished. Cheeks pinched. Giggles were had. So, just need to paint his little hands here and the little exposed skin we've got lying around. And because he's a grotesque little piece of shit, we're gonna do that with some real dirty colors. Skin like Dinge is a good color to base his skin with. So we've got his horrid little defiled flesh painted up with some skin like Dinge. Now we can go back to the armor and we can start dirtying it up, getting a bit of rust going on in things. It's sort of like browny, kind of reddish, orangey kind of tints to it because it's really old, horrible, worn armor. So we'll start with the darkest color to begin with, which will be some Rhinox hide. So like a nice dark brown to begin with. It's kind of like stippling it, you know, like sort of stabbing it a little bit. So we're not getting much like brush strokes. It's sort of more of a dusted texture. It's got a sort of brownish hue to him now, still keeping quite dark and the sort of like dark base of Rhinox Hide will work quite nicely when we start moving up through colors. He also has some sort of blemishes of red on the armor. 
So Word Bearer's red is sort of like a nice brown burgundy kind of color, rather than having like a vibrant red. This could work quite nicely with the colors we already have. Stippling around, and I'm kind of just building up areas that don't have much Rhinox hide, because I don't want to overdo all of the brown that we've done, but just enhance other areas to sort of add a bit of like interest and dynamism. So yeah, we're slowly building up these colors. He's now looking dark, dingy, reddy, browny. So next I'm gonna move up and I'm gonna use some Morn Fang Brown, which is a lighter brown. And this will kind of be like the sort of mid tone to highlight tone of the rust. I'm gonna kind of just target it on the sort of like edges and the sort of like higher up areas. There we go, sort of getting closer to the actual model style itself. And it's been relatively easy ride so far, you know, only a couple of applications of sort of dry brushing, etc. So for some rusty highlights, I'm gonna use some rat skin flesh, which is sort of like a, it's not fully orange, it's sort of like a fleshy color, but it's quite nice because it's not a bright orange, it's kind of like a dulled tone. So I'm gonna kind of use this to just really accentuate some lighter parts of rust and just stippling it. So we're not getting any strokes, we're just getting sort of blotches of this. Oopsie. It would be so good if I could just go a video without accidentally dropping a model. I think he's looking pretty horrible, to be honest. Just what we want. So that's kind of the main base of the armor done. Now that we've got all of our sort of different colors dry brushed and stippled in, and sort of textured up, I'm gonna go over with some Abaddon Black. I'm gonna thin it down to a real thin sort of glaze wash consistency. And basically just go into like little nooks and crevices and things with a wash of black, just to sort of bring back some contrast. Because when you're dry brushing and you're stippling, you're sort of losing contrast in models. Okay, so there's some washes of black applied across, and it's kind of brought the colors together a bit more, added a bit more shadow and contrast, which is ideal. One other thing we want to do to sort of bring this out, because now that we've brought it down, we want to bring some parts back up and just sort of separate highlights from shadows. Teeny tiny brush, Morn Fang Brown, because I don't want a full highlight. I want the sort of mid-tone. I'm just going to edge highlight this brown tone on. the same thing, but use some rat skin flesh, just add a very small amount of edge highlighting detail within the Mornfang Brown, and that will just give us one last little extra pop of definition. So there we are with some extra sort of like definition and edge highlighted areas, and some extra like bits of rust added in across him. Just for his medallion, just gonna dry brush in a tiny bit of lead belcher just on it, just to sort of brighten it up a tad from the horrid dark armor underneath. Yeah. Cool. So next up, we need to do all the little horrible like barnacles or pustules or whatever you want to call them that are on his armor. So to do that, I'm just going to base them all with the more cast bone. So that took the best part of an hour, I think. We have all of his lovely pustules, barnacles, whatever you want to call them, all based with some more cast bone. What we want to do to add some texture and depth to them, I'm going to use some serif and sepia. I'm just going to go over them all and basically just coat them with this wash. Okay, so there we are. You can instantly see the difference. It's just sort of brought the tone down a little bit and it's kind of saturated them a bit, added a bit more depth to the color. And over the barnacles that we've applied some serif and sepia to, just gonna go around with the wraith bone, just dot in some highlights. Kill. Cool. Ooh, that's our dung eater. One last little bit I'm gonna do for him is I'm gonna just brighten up the medallion a tad bit more. And I'll just do that with a little bit of Necron compound on a dry brush. Like so, there he is. Grotesque dung eater. All we need to do is just do the throne and then we can pop him on it. The throne actually, I think is wooden. So for the zenithal highlighting that we've done, I'm gonna use a base of Garagax sewer contrast paint, but I'm also gonna use some contrast medium to kind of thin down the contrast paint so it's not crazy overpowering. And I'll do a sort of 50-50 mix. Cool, there's the throne based. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let that dry for a wee bit. Right. 
think it should be dry now, which means we can add some shading in. To create shadows, we're gonna use some darker contrast, which is rattling grime. Same as before, but instead of all over, I'm gonna sort of like do all the sort of like tucked away areas where there would be less light hitting it. So we have our based throne. So I'm just gonna wait for it to sort of dry a bit and then we can add in some highlights to the details and probably, probably call it a day, to be honest. For the details, I'm just gonna grab some Mornfang Brown on a dry brush. Just very gently, just dry brushing on this tone around the sort of decals on the back of the chair here. And with the light application, you should really only be hitting the top layers. One throne. And with that, we can call it a day for the putrid, disgusting, rancid, foul, stinky butthole dude that is the one and only loathsome dung eater. What more can be said about this piece of shit? And we have a little version of him for just for ourselves. Just for ourselves. With that lovely, stinky little dung eater on a stinky little throne. That does it for our first episode of Elden Ring Models for 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. There will be loads more coming. It won't just be shit eaters like this guy. Thanks very much for tuning in and I'll see you all next time for some more Elden Ring or Dark Souls models. Peace out. Thank you very much again, everyone, for joining me for another episode. I hope you enjoyed today's Elden Ring models episode. It's the first one of 2023. I've designed some new graphics to go with it, which I quite like. But yeah, that about does it from me. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to leave it a like, drop a comment, hit that subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see all of you on Sunday for some more Bloodborne models. But until then, peace out, gang. And don't you dare go hollow. <laughs>